Hey everybody and welcome to another video. I am Mike B and today I'm going to be redoing a video I made a couple years ago that I wasn't really happy with the quality of and uh, I think I could have done a better job doing the video so I'm going to give it another shot right here. So if you haven't watched much of my content you'll notice that um, uh, even if you've just watched a little bit that I wear helmets a lot and I've got helmets floating around in videos randomly everywhere. Uh, if you haven't watched my content for a long time you'll understand I have an uh, unhealthy obsession with helmets. And I'm just going to kind of explain how I got into collecting helmets and why I'm obsessed with them. And why I think it's a... Nice, get a muffler. And why I think it's a good idea for you, even if you don't have any yet or you just have a couple, to either start collecting them or keep collecting them and grow your collection. Um, so yeah, we'll get into that. First of all, uh, I'll go through my first helmet story. There's a reason I'm wearing this. This is not my first helmet. I actually lost my very first helmet. Pretty sure it was stolen, but that's beside the point. So when I was about seven years old, uh, I started getting into military stuff. I don't know why. My, my dad had a big collection of stuff, and then um, he joined the military when, again when I was eight or, or seven years old in 1998, and um, I just kind of got really into the military stuff. So I uh, started getting, he got the, he got Sportsman's Guide catalogs back in the 90s when you had to order through the catalog before they even had their website, I think. And so I was looking through there and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, a helmet. And I started watching war movies like Patton and stuff like that. And Patton was obsessed with helmets and he wore his really nicely. And I just kind of, you know, saw that and I'm like, God, I want one of those so bad. And so um, I was always, I always had to work for what I got. I didn't just get, my parents just didn't buy me stuff. Um, I know it sucked at the time, but I really appreciate that now. So anyway, I told my dad that I wanted this helmet. And at that time, a post-Vietnam M1 was like $10 in 1998. So he said, okay, well, I'm going to have you do work then. You can go, you know, you can earn your $10. And it was a lot more than, you know, you, you, you do a lot more, or I did a lot more work than you would have to do for $10 nowadays. We'll just put it that way. I kind of was exploited. But anyway, so I earned the money and he actually ordered it for me. And it was there, you know, it took about a week and a half to two weeks to mail it in. And then it came in the mail or came by UPS. And anyway, I got this helmet and that was game over. I was so obsessed with it. All the neighbor kids loved it. And then they ended up hounding their parents to get some. And then um, I actually, one of the neighbor kids that I play with that didn't really, wasn't really into this stuff. His dad was, they were cleaning their house and they threw away another M1, which I still have the shell. I just got to get that restored. And it is a front seam. So it's a World War II shell. He was throwing this helmet away. So now I had two helmets. So I could play, you know, army with my friends and stuff like that. Anyway, it snowballed into that effect. Um, or into that uh, kind of the effect of me being obsessed. I got a bunch of Swiss helmets, you know. They were really cheap at the time. I could work for, you know, a day and then get a helmet to play with for whatever. It was really cool. And I started realizing that um, every country has its different flair. And this is reason kind of number one or, you know, second thing I'm going to talk about. Is every country has its own flair in, on their design. And that's really cool when you're looking at photographs, okay. When you're looking at a soldier, a lot of the gear and stuff might look the same or similar. And it might look all like one jumbled mess of stuff. They might be using the same rifles in another country. But the helmets are going to be a telltale sign, uh, generally speaking, of where that soldier is from or where they were, you know, fighting and all that stuff and what year generally. So I really like each country's got a different design and a different take on what they thought was the best for their military. And then, you know, later on I got into like the different kinds of steels that were used. Was it brittle? Was it bend? You know? Cold, uh, cold rolled, cold press, hot rolled, hot press, steel, you know, all that stuff. But for, for this point only, like, you know, you get the German Stahlhelm. That's an awesome design. And then you get the US M1, which was a cool design as well. You got all these different designs that are so unique. And it's still that way, even though a lot of countries still use a generally similar shape, you know, like the German helmet. There's differences, and each country still has its own flair on what they think is best. They're constantly improving. So that's another big reason why I like helmets um, just as much as I like other surplus stuff. But we'll get into why specifically helmets in a bit. Um, another thing was when I was a kid, and even now today, generally speaking, for the amount of work you have to do to actually get a helmet, they're really affordable. Compared to a lot of other military stuff, they're really affordable. And that really is a big deal for a lot of people, including myself, uh, that are on a I'm not on a low budget anymore. I'm on a semi-low budget. But for people that are on a low budget, you can get a tangible piece of history for not a lot of money. And there's no license required. You don't have to pass a background check, all that stuff like you do with a firearm. And it's pretty cool. You can just have it. They're small. They don't take up a lot of space. So I really like that too. And there's endless possibilities of models to choose from. Like my, my, my goal is to try to have an example of, you know, every major country's helmet 
throughout history, like in a row. Uh, the only one I have that for so far is Italy because they didn't really change their patterns a lot. But um, yeah, I want to get Germany, which I almost have, almost have. Got a couple of gaps I got to fill in. Uh, the U.S. I have a couple little gaps to fill in. Uh, it's just really cool to have the lineage and like see the progression from each country as well right in front of you. You can actually hold them. You learn that way. So the, the possibilities are endless. Like there's a never ending game. I want to have that and I'm probably not going to even finish that before I die. So it's, it's, it's a pretty fun game. And that, that the best part about collecting anything is the hunt. And when you've got endless possibilities and you kind of see things and you learn about new helmets that you didn't know existed, the hunt is on and that is the most fun part of collecting. I think, um, and then just having it is really fun too because you can go reference it, but the hunt is, if, if you collect anything, you'll know what I'm talking about. The hunt is amazing. And uh, when we were talking about helmets too, um, they can be practical for, for things. Uh, we've done a lot of ballistic tests, you know, if you want to use it for that, if you think that that's going to save your life someday. I mean, I wouldn't recommend, you know, relying on an old helmet, but I guess it's better than nothing. And if you're, you know, thinking the shit is, shit, shit's going to hit the fan, all that stuff, even if you're out and about just on a patrol or whatever, um, you might bump your head a lot. And head injuries, if you don't have medical support, uh, support right there and ready to go like we do now, uh, a head injury can be a really serious thing. So helmets are pretty practical when it comes to that, too. So not only do you have a collector's piece, but if need be, it's there. You can wear it as a hard hat. Uh, in a non-electrical fashion. I wouldn't recommend wearing, for, wearing it as a hard hat or any other safety thing. They're cool, but again, it's still protection if you ever need it. So there's that. Again, not recommending it for that, but that is a possibility that I've heard. So um, another thing too is this isn't solely why I collect helmets. I, I really don't do this. Usually when I grab a helmet, if I'm eyeballing something, I'm going to have it in my collection. It's not going anywhere. So, but it, they do appreciate in value. Uh, and I'll make another video that's more extensive into this and give concrete examples of uh, things that I've personally bought that are worth a lot more than what I paid for them nowadays. And it's weird that some of them are like that because they dry up. Uh, once they're not surplus anymore, they become collectible, which I'll make another video on. But uh, let's just say that my collection has, it appreciates every year and every time another helmet becomes harder to find on the primary market. So, if you want to look at it as an investment standpoint, and they're, they're becoming increasingly more liquid too. I noticed that if I need to sell a helmet, there's always somebody that wants to buy one. Uh, back in the day, it was, really, it was really easy to buy, but it was really hard to sell. Now it's kind of evening out in that way. So that's another reason that I enjoy collecting helmets is, you know, it's, it's liquid. It's, if times get tough, I can move these, even though I don't want to, uh, a lot of them, but <clears throat> that's available for you. And so kind of going along with that, military surplus firearms have become, let's just say more expensive than my 20 year old self could afford if I were to just be getting in the hobby. I, I really feel bad for people that missed out on it. I caught like the last three years, two, three years of it being okay, the market being okay. It wasn't as good as it was in the nineties and stuff like that. But um, I did manage to snag some deals. I've still got guns that I've had for you know, 10, 15 years. And <clears throat> I'm glad I have them. And I really feel bad for people that got into the market late. I would say, I would argue this, that the helmet is the next best thing to a firearm. It is just like the firearm that's got its own flair. Every country's got its own flair and, and, and design that they thought was the best and they issued out. Helmets are second in line, I think. I think that these things are going to get way more popular in the next few years, uh, whether it be for bartering, trading, just for collectible stuff. Um, I've traded helmets before. It's pretty cool. Uh, or just to have as a collecting a collection item that won't break the bank. I mean, you can get you can get some helmets even from my shop. Yeah, I'm gonna shamelessly plug my shop. You can get some affordable helmets for 20 to 30 bucks. Um, on average, they're between 20 and 50 dollars for just your basic common helmets that have a ton of history to them. Cold the Cold War is a very historical event. I don't know people don't like it because you know oh, it didn't kick off. It wasn't you know blood and guts. But when you're talking about something like an Eastern Bloc helmet, like a Polish WZ-50 or something like that, well, you have to know that that model, whether that specific helmet that you have was or not, that particular model was exported and actually was used in armed conflicts around the world. And the more you know about this helmet and its extensive use, the cooler it is to actually have a tangible piece of history that you can teach people about yourself. So I believe that helmets are the next best thing to actual military surplus firearms. If you're if you're getting into that and you're frustrated and you're younger and you don't have a lot of money like I sure as hell didn't, 
and you really want something still to be, you know, that, that tangible history part, um, the helmet is a really good way to do that. It's fun. I wear them around sometimes just to see kind of, you know, oh, well, this liner was a, this, that was a good idea. Or man, that sucks. I feel bad for the people that had to wear that. It's pretty cool. It's tangible history. It's just like shooting a rifle, you know, wow, that, that really kicks, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of heavy. You know, you, you figure it out. You kind of, again, tangible history. The two words are very important when you're talking about helmets. So that's just a brief overview of why I got into collecting helmets. And I, don't, I, I cannot explain the actual obsession and why I'm drawn to them so intensely. I'm actually drawn to helmets more than I am the firearms, to be honest with you. So I know it's weird, but it is what it is. So I, I just, I know that the firearms are going to be harder to find than the helmets are, and you need a license for that stuff. And that can change with different political climates. This really, I don't think will. So um, yeah, that's all I've got really. I hope this uh, kind of explains and, 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 and um, clears up why I'm always wearing these damn things. And I've got a huge wall of them behind my usual background. And uh, I, I'm definitely saying, don't worry about it. It's just my collection. This is my passion and all that stuff. So helmets, man, if you haven't considered uh, starting a collection or either, you know, starting a collection or improving your current collection, I highly advise uh, getting on that bandwagon because these may go the way of the firearms in the future because there are only so many of these. And again, I found one in the garbage when I was a kid and I've found people that are tossing them or giving them away basically because they don't want them. I do. So things get destroyed all the time. They get lost. They get left out in the rain. They get destroyed. Or if I already said that. So just be aware that it's just like the guns. These are next, I think. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. If you want to support my work, if you like this stuff, you want to help me be able to afford more helmets to give you an education on so you may not get burned on something, you know, because you can get burned on helmets. I'll make, I'll make some more videos about that. Um, I might make a whole helmet collecting series, actually. I haven't decided yet, but this winter is supposed to be really long and shitty, so that might be a possibility. Thanks for listening to me rant for probably 12, 13, 14, 15 minutes. I know I can get a little long with it. I just wanted to go over a few points. Um, yeah, but if you want to consider supporting the channel, you can do that with the Patreon. The link to that is in the description. Or you can become a channel supporter, channel member. And uh, five bucks a month or more on either support method gets you access to my Discord server, which is pretty fun. A lot of information is exchanged there. I learn stuff. I try to teach stuff. It's just a fun time in general. Very cool. So if you can't support the channel financially, I totally get that. That's fine. Um, but, you know, you watching just, you know, is, is good enough. So... Hopefully this clears things up and I'll probably reference this video quite a bit. So if you've been sent here by me in the comments because you don't know why I have a weird unhealthy obsession with uh, helmets, now you know. So thanks for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next ranty video.